Dual channel memory isn't complicated, shoving two sticks of RAM in the right slots effectively doubles the bandwidth which, according to conventional wisdom, can have a noticeable performance benefit in games, even when the amount of actual RAM is the same. Most of us on tech YouTube wouldn't be caught dead recommending single channel memory, with some of us reacting more strongly than others. No Way. Despite this, a lot of big companies, who you would think would know better, still ship their PCs with just one stick of RAM. On the one side then, there's the unified voices of the self-styled experts of YouTube saying that dual channel memory is best and that anyone building PCs with single channel memory is leaving performance on the table. On the other, there's the multi-billion dollar purveyors of pre-built PCs who clearly don't think it's that big of a deal. We can't both be right. Right? When it comes to single versus dual channel memory, I'm usually on the side of other YouTubers. It seems like such a small upgrade that could be of so much benefit that it seems almost malicious not to. But in truth, I've never actually tested this fact in any kind of depth. To rectify this, in this video I'm comparing single channel RAM versus dual channel to see if my pre-existing bias was correct or if I was making a big deal over nothing. After all, my belief that Dell, HP and others ship single channel RAM in their pre-builts as a cynical cost-cutting measure is itself a cynical one, based on my own assumption that corporations will always put minor cost savings over the benefit of their customers. It's entirely possible that my assumption is wrong, and that the big PC builders actually do know better than little old me. To find out for certain, I'll be testing two 16GB memory setups. Systems stuck on 8GB tend to have to rely on the page file to run games, and therefore can be bottlenecked by the kind of storage you're using, so I'll stick to just 16GB for now. My test setup today is um, actually a little less moderately priced than usual. I'm using my personal gaming and editing system featuring a Ryzen 5 5600X clocked to 4.6GHz and an RTX 3070 along with a fixed 16GB page file assigned to the 500GB Samsung Gen 3 NVMe SSD and with games running from a second, slightly slower, crucial NVMe SSD. The RAM in question consists of a pair of V-Color 8GB single rank sticks clocked at DDR4-3600 with CL16 timings and a single 16GB stick of dual rank Corsair Dominator Platinum at the same frequency and timings. Starting with a tricky one, and I should probably spoil things a little for you up front, the key difference I expected to find between single channel and dual channel RAM was not so much in average frames per second, but in smoothness of gameplay. The problem with testing Fortnite is, these days it's basically one big frame time spike. To try and get around this, my test methodology was to do four test passes per setup using competitive settings and basically toss the first result, as Fortnite tends to stutter more on the first run or two while shaders compile. What I'm showing here is the average of the three remaining results, and the difference in the low end is, well, pretty small. 0.1% lows are in the 80s on both single and dual channel setups, so stutter was nowhere near as bad as I've experienced in the past, with about a 6% benefit to dual channel over single. 1% lows and averages showed a greater disparity of about 8 to 9%, so pretty much exactly the opposite of what I expected. Splitgate in single channel showed a lot more of what I expected, the kind of massive frame drops that got David all hot and bothered. This time I also averaged the results from three matches per setup, and the single channel tests all showed consistently low 1% and 0.1% scores compared to the dual channel setup, though this didn't seem to affect averages more than a couple of frames. I'm not the kind of sore loser to blame frame time spikes for me losing, but it is a fact that I played better on the dual channel kit than the single. Just the same. Apex Legends was clearly not impressed by my attempts to test it and tried to make me look like a fool. 1% and 0.1% scores were about as I'd expect, between 10% and 12% slower on single channel than dual channel. On the other hand, averages on the dual channel setup were actually about 4% slower. I did drop in different areas on each run, so there is the possibility that the environment had some effect on the frame rate, but then we could say the same for the lows. Oh well, just one of the joys of benchmarking online games.
Call of Duty Warzone has a reputation for being a ram hog, so it seemed like an ideal test for this comparison. Like with Fortnite, however, the results were basically the opposite of what I expected. 0.1% lows were nearly identical across RAM setups, with differences only appearing at the 1% and average frame rates. What was quite nice was that I had a relatively smooth gameplay experience in Warzone with no apparent visual glitches or missing textures, and I don't get to say that very often. I thought I'd round things up with Cyberpunk, partly because it's a generally very demanding game, and partly because it's a pretty easy test to repeat. I can almost do this drive in my sleep now. Unlike the other tests, my choice of quality settings wasn't aimed at gaining a super high frame rate, but keeping traffic and pedestrians at the high setting and enabling all of the ray tracing options made sure that the whole system was getting a workout rather than just the GPU. For once, I got pretty much what I expected, a drop of over 10% in 0.1% lows, a little under 10% in 1% lows, and a minor difference in averages. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit underwhelmed. I expected more of what David saw when testing pre-built PCs, where games just played out like old-timey movies recorded on hand-cranked cameras. Admittedly, even running at half its rated speed, the Domplat is still dual rank memory running at 1800 megatransfers per second, so it's not like I'm using something that's as slow as DDR2. Maybe dropping the RAM speed lower might give closer to the authentic Acer Nitro Loser Suckface experience, but it's also equally possible that there's something else making his pre-builds run worse than my PC. Maybe bloatware, maybe cheap or faulty storage, or perhaps the spirit of that girl from the Fear series. I'm interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. In the meantime, I'm not going to change my recommendation. There's still a measurable benefit to Dual Channel, even if it's not as earth-shattering as I expected. I also haven't changed my opinion on why pre-builds do this. Clearly the OEMs have judged that a 10% drop in performance is worth the couple of bucks they say by skimping out on RAM sticks. If you'd like to see me torture myself using an 8 gig system with a hard drive page file, click the video on the left. And once it's finished, I'll put my next video up on the right, where I'll be testing out 32 gig options. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.